Hello and welcome to another episode of my Productivity Mastery Series. My name is Carl Pauline and today we're looking at projects and why you should not, and I will repeat that, why you should not be turning everything into a project. Now, before we get started with this, I'd just like to take you back 25 years to the late 1990s when I was working in a very busy law office in the city of Leeds in the United Kingdom. We had a system. Everybody followed the system. Whether you were the managing partner of the company, of the firm, or you were the lowest level administration assistant, we all followed a simple, straightforward system. Very early in the morning, mail would be delivered by the mail the postman, the postwoman, whatever, they would all come into the office. We had a dedicated team of people, I think there was about three of them, who would then process the mail and it would then be distributed to the various departments within the firm. That big pile of letters and documents would then be put on a special table in our office and we would take a 10 minute break and we'd just organise that into various piles and hand it out to the team of people in our department. Now the system was very simple. Those documents that were given to me for my responsibility would be put into my in tray. Now I was not very high up in the firm, so therefore I had a plastic in tray. My boss, on the other hand, had a beautiful aluminium in tray or aluminum if you're in North America. But it didn't really matter. Everyone followed the same system. The mail that came in for you would be put into an in tray and then this process or the system was you take the pile from the top and you would then move, deal with it and move it to the side. And it was basically a nice workflow. Deal with this, deal with this. Now, of course, there were some files that hung over and we'd have a pending tray. And I used to have maybe three or four files in there that was waiting for something or something like that. But it didn't really matter. Everything was in that in tray and the goal was to take whatever was in the in tray and move it to the out tray and then file it at the end of the day. Now the key, the thing that brought all this together was these big filing cabinets behind me that were organized by Alphabet. Now the thing is, all this system that we used to use back then, and I'm pretty sure it's still being followed today, was developed over hundreds of years. These system worked. People didn't get overwhelmed. People didn't get stressed out by the amount of work. Backlog was not something we even considered. It just didn't happen. So what's gone wrong? Well, before we get to that, I have a brief message from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, productivity, freelancing and more. Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and skill level and members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. For example, this course on essentialism by Greg McEwen is fantastic. It has helped me to identify what is important to me so I can focus my time and energy on the essential things in my life. If you're looking for the perfect place to ignite your creativity and learning, then give Skillshare a try. The first 1,000 people to use the link or my code, Carl Pauline, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, so thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, what did go wrong when we transitioned from the manual system we were using in the late 1990s, early 2000s, and around about 2010 when pretty much we'd all gone digital and we were moving documents online and we were also using email, which had become a pervasive problem over the 10 years. Well, the problem is we've overcomplicated everything. No longer do we file stuff alphabetically 
like we used to do. Now we've come up with really, really complex ways of filing documents and organizing our notes. Why? Why do we need to do that? Now, the thing is, if I needed a file back in the late 1990s for Mr. Bertie, all I would need to do is to stand up from my desk, turn round, go to the filing cabinet, which had, say, A to D, open the drawer, go to B, pull out Mr. Bertie. It was, what, one minute, two minutes? Wasn't very long to find that file. And my colleague, if I was on holiday, if I was away on vacation or on holiday, my colleague may have to deal with Mr. Bertie's file, so all he had to do was stand up, walk round the desk, open the filing cabinet, pull out Mr. Bertie. It was simple. Everyone followed the same system. Organised stuff alphabetically. When the files were closed and they were, we called them archived or scheduled, they were archived, they were sent to the archive. Guess what they did in the archive? organized everything alphabetically. It wasn't done by any complex system of, okay, this belonged to this department and it was done in June, January 1996 and it belongs to Mr. Abacus. You know, we didn't have complex systems like that. All we needed to do was follow a simple alphanumeric organization system. You can do that today with all your files and documents. You can organize stuff alphabetically. Now, this thing about turning everything into projects. Now, I have a suspicion I know where this came from. This came from a misreading of David Allen's Getting Things Done book. In that book, David Allen does not tell us to organize our lists in our task manager by project. Our lists, if you're using GTD, your lists, are organized by context. That could be at office, at phone, at home, at car, at the hardware store. Whatever tool, place or person you are using, that's how you would organize your list. So if you have a task that you need to talk to your wife about, that would go into a context with your wife's name or husband's name. If you have a, a, a piece of work or a task to do that you have to be at your office to do, that would go into your at office list. Your projects would be organized, wait for it, in an file folder system, which you would come have near your desk. This is a little bit, GTD is still a little bit on the paper-based side. Today, if you were following a strict GTD guideline, you'd probably have something like Google Drive, Microsoft One, OneDrive or Apple iCloud, and you would organize all your projects in there, in folders, just like they used to be done in GTD. Where this idea of organizing all your tasks by project has come from, I do not know. It's someone had made a mistake somewhere and it just exploded from there. But that is not how GTD works. That's not how even the most productive people you know work because the most productive people I know and the most productive people in the world don't organize tasks by projects. I think, as David Allen says, most people have between 30 and 150 projects. Well, if you've got even just 30 things organized in your task manager, you're overwhelmed before you start, and that's on the low level. So what, do, what can we do? Well, of course, you could follow my system, which is the time sector system, and I've talked a lot about that, which is organizing your tasks by when you will do them. But another way of doing this is to stop treating everything as a project. Look at your work. What is your work? What are you, what are you employed to do? This is where your core work comes in. Now, let's just take, for example, a pilot. It doesn't matter whether a pilot is flying from Los Angeles to San Diego, which is, I think, a 45-minute flight, or a pilot who's flying from London to Sydney, which is, I think, it's an 18-hour flight. They follow the same process. They check the plane. They check the weather reports. They check their flight de destination, they, their flight path that they follow. They're being aware of any storms that might be on the way. They check everything. But it's a process. They follow the same process every time they start their day. Equally, a doctor in an operation room, you know, a surgeon, they don't treat every patient as a project. It's just a process. I go to the surgery suite. We have a checklist that we follow and we follow that checklist, perform the surgery and the patient is wheeled out. 
Salespeople, not every client that you have is a project. A client is just something that you have to contact, or someone I should say, that you need to contact. It's a process. You follow a process. So if you're a salesperson, all you need is What's the list of people I need to call today, go to see today, and perhaps I need to result, you know, set up their order with our, our order department. So rather than treating everything as a project, look at the process of doing your work. Now, I don't treat each of the videos that I produce as a project. They're just something that I put together on a weekly basis. Equally writing my blog post, I put on a you know, I have a time each day, or each week I should say, where I put, I start doing my writing. All I need is a list of things to write about. Now, something bigger, for example, if I'm doing an online course or writing a book, well, the same rule kind of applies, is what's the process of writing a book? Well, it's just sitting down and writing pretty much every single day for a minimum of 30 minutes. After a period of six to eight weeks, I have a book, or at least the first draft of a book. So I think the biggest problem that most people have and one of the biggest causes of people's overwhelm is that we're turning everything into a project because we have this idea that anything that requires two or more steps is a project. Well, for me to book my car in for a service is more than two steps. I have to pick a date, I have to call the service centre, I have to arrange with my wife when's going to be the best time to go and it's like three or four steps to get my car booked into a service, but it's not a project. I can do that, you know, I just need to make sure I book car in for a service, talk to my wife and we'll figure out a date. I don't need to turn it into a project. Equally, you know, cleaning the house up, you know, doing a spring clean, although we're going into the winter, it's not a project. All I need to know is, okay, on Saturday, I'm going to clean the house. You know, I'm not going to turn that into a project. It's just a simple task or actually something like that. If I'm going to spend all day on the house, I'm going to block it out in the calendar and just say that day I'm cleaning the house. So I think if you want to reduce your overwhelm, if you want to get more focused on getting your work done, then you need to get rid of those projects. Just get rid of the projects and start thinking about the process of doing your work, the process of cleaning the house. I keep this office clean by having a, an hour every Saturday where I basically just pull all the furniture out and vacuum underneath it and wipe down all the surfaces. That keeps my office clean. I don't need to turn it into a project every three months to do a big spring clean. And even if I did, it wouldn't be a project. So please, if you want to get rid of all this overwhelm, then remove these projects from your task manager. Genuine projects, of course, can be put into, as the original GTD idea, into a file folder on your computer these days where you can keep all the documents and anything else that you related to that project together. But for the most part, your task manager just needs to tell you, what do I want to be working on today? That's it. That's the only folder that really matters, is your today list. Everything else is just a holding pen for tasks that either you haven't decided when you're going to do them or are for future tasks. So hopefully that's helped you a little bit. I did write a blog post on this this week and I'm going to put that link in the show notes below if you want to learn a little bit more about it. And I hopefully this will help you to get a clear understanding and reduce a lot of that overwhelm and feeling that you're behind by starting to think about what am I going to do today? That's really all that matters. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode. It just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain, so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work, because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. 
And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired, or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.